Goldman Sachs reports that as many as 27 U.S. traded Chinese companies could be eligible for a secondary listing in Hong Kong, with the city likely to embrace companies that want to come home amid rising risks of U.S. listed Chinese firms being delisted. Included among the 27 firms is the electric car maker NIO, which would likely qualify for secondary listings in Hong Kong. So, what more does the investment bank say about NIO? What information is on a need to know basis for investors? We're about to find out, so stay tuned. Goldman's list may shed light on potential candidates for future secondary listings in the city. Sentiment is currently fragile as the American depository receipts of Chinese companies and tech firms listed in Hong Kong have plummeted following DD Global's decision to delist in the U.S. amid a cybersecurity probe by Beijing. A Hong Kong listing would give foreign investors in these companies another avenue to cash out as they'll be able to convert their ADRs into Hong Kong shares as the two will be fully interchangeable. So NEO is one of the largest Chinese ADRs with a market value of almost $70 billion. But NEO isn't the only company that appeared on Goldman Sachs' list. Didi, which has already announced its intention to list in Hong Kong, was also on the list with a market cap of $39.2 billion. Housing transaction services provider KE Holdings, Lufax Holding, Tencent Music Entertainment Group, and e-commerce company Vipshop Holdings were also on the list. News of the ride-hailing giant's decision to delist in the U.S. has exasperated market worries of a deeper economic decoupling between China and the U.S. There are also concerns that increased regulatory pressures in both countries could force more Chinese ADRs to delist from the U.S. The question is, will NEO be among the companies to delist? Now, does William Lee look like someone who wants to have his company's shares delisted from the New York Stock Exchange? No, we don't think so. Controversy has engulfed NEO and most other Chinese companies this year. Despite putting up stellar growth numbers, NEO's stock price has deflated by about 50% from its all-time high achieved earlier in the year. Right now, NEO trades at around five times next year's sales estimates, which is substantially lower than its direct competitors in the EV manufacturing industry. NEO also has the added advantage of conducting business in its domestic market. Moreover, the fear of delisting seems highly overblown and is a prime reason why NEO trades at such a deep discount. Ultimately, NEO's growth will likely exceed estimates, and the company's share price should move substantially higher in future years. NEO stock recently crashed to a new 52 week low, touching down below $30 for the first time in over a year. So, why is NEO stock cascading lower, dropping by 30% in November alone? No, it's not that NEO is performing poorly. On the contrary, we think the company's just had a record deliveries month in November. Shares continue to be put under pressure due to the perpetual panic about China, delistings, and other transitory factors that don't directly correlate to NEO's performance as a company. Nevertheless, the stock is oversold now, and the technical image should begin to improve from here going forward. We see a possibly long-term double-bottom pattern developing here as shares hit $30 support in recent sessions. Moreover, the RSI touched down on the 30 level, while the CCI registered a minus 300 print, consistent with another highly oversold point earlier in the year. The full stochastic is starting to turn upward, and we should begin to see the stock return to a more bullish technical momentum soon. But how will NEO navigate the China-induced sell-off? Most Chinese stocks have gotten crushed lately, and NEO is no exception. However, looking deeper, we see that NEO probably shouldn't be affected by the meltdown in specific Chinese equities, and NEO's recent sell-off is perhaps a transitory phenomenon. In general, it's a messy situation with Chinese stocks right now. No one seems to know what the Chinese Communist Party is going to do next. Will the CCP put in more stringent regulations? Will the Chinese government nationalize Alibaba? Will the party forbid Chinese companies from listing abroad, or more specifically, in the U.S.? But the most pressing question right now seems to be whether NEO and other Chinese companies will get delisted from U.S. stock exchanges. There are several serious questions here, and the recent uncertainty has been highly detrimental to confidence in NEO and the company's share price. So let's dive a bit deeper and see if we can answer some of those pressing questions for NEO investors. The CCP has been flexing its muscles, and it's clear that the party is all-powerful and essentially calls all the shots in China. 
Nevertheless, it's not in the party's interest to damage its economy and set economic progress back 20 or 30 years. We believe that the government is intent on building its economy to greater heights. Did you know that the Chinese stock losses listed in the U.S. have eclipsed $1 trillion in 2021 alone? This detrimental dynamic is not the economic progress that the Chinese government needs or wants. We can't say that the CCP doesn't care about stock prices. It's more than just about the power. From how we see it, the Chinese government cares about stock prices. China's economy is relatively advanced now, and the Chinese stock market plays an integral role in the country's social structure. Without a stable stock market, the CCP could be looking at possible civil unrest, social disorder, and other tragic outcomes that could weaken the CCP's position and reduce the party's power and influence over its citizens. In fact, Chinese regulators recently came out with a statement soothing delisting concerns. China's securities regulators said that it respects where Chinese companies list shares and raise funds. Furthermore, the regulatory agency said that reports for regulators to push for BIEs to drop their U.S. listings are a complete misinterpretation and misrepresentation of the agency's regulations. We have an entirely different perspective from the neo delisting fears. Yes, China's ride service, Didi, is delisting from the New York Stock Exchange and is looking to list in Hong Kong. However, this is ultimately Didi's choice, and this doesn't mean that every Chinese company will delist. Many companies have dual or multiple listings, and in general, the delisting fears seem highly overblown. NEO has no incentive to delist from the U.S., and the probability of a NEO delisting occurring is remarkably low. Now that we discuss why NEO would probably not give up its U.S. listing, let's talk about the company. One overlooked factor is that NEO is a genuine premium EV manufacturer. This phenomenon sets NEO apart from other Chinese EV manufacturers such as Xpeng, Li Auto, and BYD. We think that NEO primarily competes with premium EV automakers like Tesla and Lucid. So what are the differentials involved? What sets NEO apart from its American counterparts is that it's a Chinese company primarily focused on growing market share in China's domestic market right now. Moreover, NEO has the support and the backing of the Chinese government. During the height of the pandemic, NEO was still a struggling EV startup whose problems got resolved after a $1.4 billion investment from the Chinese government. There's an enormous incentive for NEO to succeed in China, and the company is starting to shift into gear. We see that NEO's revenues continue to increase at a robust pace after the COVID-19 slowdown, and we should continue to see substantial growth going forward. The company is going to deliver slightly shy of 100000 this year but the company is gearing up for much more significant production. It's important to point out that demand is not the issue for NEO, and there should be no shortage of demand for high-quality premium EVs in China in future years. China remains the world's largest EV market, and NEO has new product launches to tap into. First, to satisfy the growing Chinese middle and upper class population, NEO is launching a premium ET7 sedan. The ET7 will compete in the luxury end while the ET5 will be a more mid-market offering. We'll see how NEO performs in the coming months following its launch on NEO Day 2021. Now, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like, subscribe, and share buttons. Stay safe, and see you next time. Thanks so much for tuning in.